I just got started to say that there's been some a lot of good news for the Reagan family this uh, this week with your father being inducted into the Hall of Fame for Georgia racing. So, uh, yeah, I think that's <laughs> a, a big accomplishment for uh, for my dad. Obviously, growing up here in in Georgia, racing a lot uh, in the you know the southeast, not only in, in Georgia but around uh, at the the highest level. You know, a lot of local racetracks, a lot of uh, you know short tracks uh, with the Legends Car Program, owning tracks. So a lot of neat stuff that, that he's done for racing for the state of Georgia. And so it's neat to see him uh, get honored in that way. So you've been racing since you were 11. Was he yeah. was he the kind of father who was like you know if you want to race, race. If you want to be a musician. Be a musician or <laughs> uh, yeah you know dad he actually kind of pushed me away from racing for a little while I wanted to race I, I grew up going to the racetrack with him and, and, and seeing the short tracks whether it be a go-kart race or a, a midget race or a stock car race and I wanted to earlier but you know he knew that uh, it's a very hard road and a very uh, expensive hobby to have and so uh, I guess 11 12 years old I finally convinced him that that was something that I needed to do and uh, we've enjoyed it ever since. So when I guess you go from just being a casual uh, interest to really thinking I can do this and, and win. You know probably when you're 15, 16 years old you start taking it a little more serious, you start traveling around some uh, and that's when you have to decide are you going to go to school, are you going to move away, you know what are you going to do with your life so I uh, started getting more serious with racing and uh, glad that, that we made that decision to tough it out because there are definitely a lot of tough nights that you weighed out, you know, is this the right thing to do? You're spending a lot of money. It's very hard to get into the door uh, with one of the top NASCAR teams, so it worked out good. And there's some, there's some family connections here in Houston County. I know, you know, Dilla's, I guess, your home, you would call that. Yeah, uh, I, I, I grew up in Unadilla. I went to school at Fullington Academy. But uh, both of my grandparents live in Houston County. Uh, you know, we attended church uh, here. And so it's always, um, you know, it, it, it's home. You know, we went to grocery shopping, you know, we played ball, a lot of neat things uh, like that, uh, you know, between the two uh, towns. So to now have our, uh, our dealership here in Perry, uh, definitely a, a great town. Uh, great to uh, be able to come back home and, and have a place to go hang out. Yeah, you see these kind of, they've already got signs up. They had it up after the, the 400. Well, congratulations! Yeah. Now we got so there's a few welcome home. You know. Yeah, you, you only have one hometown, and so it's great that uh, everyone keeps up with the racing scene. They keep up with the NASCAR, and you know it's cool to get a win like that. Uh, you know, on a national stage, uh, you know, bringing a, a Sprint Cup trophy back to the state of Georgia uh, for the first time since Bill Elliott won years ago. So it, it was good to uh, to get that win for uh, for everyone, uh, not only here in the middle uh, part of the state, but for everyone in the state. And you get the win. You get your trophy, and what do you do? You break it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It gets broken in Victory Lane. There's so many people there. Uh, there was Coca-Cola all over the place, and so it, yeah, one of the back glass pieces got uh, got cracked, but that gives it a little bit of character. <laughs> Looks kind of like a little older. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. We can live with that. And, you know, so, not that win. Just, it's been a few weeks now, so any other reflections about what it took to get that victory? You know, it, it's taken a lot of close opportunities missed out opportunities to win races to finally cross over that that line first uh, if you have to finish second you have to finish third you have to finish fourth a lot of times before you can get that win so felt good uh, but the world that we live in we're back to work the very next week so there's not much time for celebration what is it about the Daytona track <clears throat> you know the 500 is a big story about what happened there but still to be in a position to win there and go back again and be in a position was there something just something about the big scene the big you know, Daytona is a special place in any racer's heart. We Everybody wants to win there, but you've got to have a good car and a good motor, a good strategy. And I think that all the stars have lined up just right. The last year or two, we've been very competitive at the uh, super speedway tracks at Daytona and Talladega. So uh, it's always a, a lot of fun to uh, to go to a racetrack knowing you've got a chance to win. Plus, you contended, you contended at the uh, Charlotte, the Coke 600. That's, that's right. That's yeah. kind of, a, I guess, number two behind the 500. Yeah, I mean, we've had some some big races this year. The Coke 600, we finished second. Uh, the Daytona 500 is a big one. And uh, now coming up, we have Indy. So if we can go to Indianapolis and get a good run for uh, UPS and our team, that would kind of uh, take care of the uh, the big three. I know you said Daytona is like it for racing. Where does Indianapolis, I guess, rank? You know, for me, Indy's up there, but I, I would probably cherish a win 
at, uh, at Darlington, even a Martinsville, as much as I would Indianapolis, just because of the history and, and stock car racing. Uh, obviously, Indy is a uh, is an unbelievable motorsports venue. Uh, would, would mean a lot to win there, but uh, you know Daytona, Darlington, Atlanta, Charlotte, you know th those places are real close to my heart too. I was going to discuss a smart racer too this year because I see all these pileups happening on these. In these, in these Daytona and Charlotte races, and here goes number six kind of scooting through like. <laughs> yeah, you got to have a little skill but a lot of luck. And so I think we've had some luck to uh, follow our way. And, and we, uh, we've been in our share of accidents over the years, but sometimes the luck falls your way and you're able to avoid some, and then that certainly helps. Now, how many people are standing behind you with the same UPS <coughs> shirt on when you're celebrating? That's a, that's a pretty big crew. A lot. I mean, we, we've got about 20 guys that are on our pit crew, our, our mechanic staff, our, our engineering staff, obviously our crew chief, our spotter. And so you add up uh, those 18, 20 guys and everyone has a, a very crucial part in making that car tick. And then you have a lot more supporting cast at the race shop, uh, building engines, building transmissions and gears and hanging bodies. So, you know, there's a, a couple of hundred people collectively that works hard to make that number six car go around the track. How many of them do you personally know, or is that the crew chief's You know, I do? probably know three quarters of them. You know, it's almost impossible to know all three or four hundred employees, but uh, being at Roush for three or four years, I've got to know a lot of them over the years. Uh, some of them have been on other teams throughout the uh, you know, the last five or six years. So it's, uh, it's, it's a good group of guys, and I uh, enjoy being around them. Not your own knowledge, I guess, of, of cars and engines, because <clears throat> I just saw a story from that Charlotte did about the rest of Right, the I've got the store. a... A common interest with with my dad and my family on on older cars and, and unique vehicles. So that's a hobby of mine. I don't really have boats or airplanes. Uh, I enjoy older cars. So I've got some old fire trucks, a police car too, uh, just some things that are kind of unique. Where do you get these cars? Everywhere. I find them on eBay. I find them uh, on the side of the road, sitting there for sale. Local friends and family. Uh, one of my, my uh, 1964 Chevrolet pickup truck was. I uh, was sold at the Chevrolet dealership in Unadilla, Georgia, brand new. So, you know, vehicles that, uh, that were all around, uh, scattered around the U.S. So you're actually going to do something in Dublin tomorrow? In yeah, going to Dublin, 441 Speedway. Uh, you know, I'll always uh, like to race even on my off weekends. So they've got a, a charity race benefiting the, the Shriners Children's Hospital uh, and the Nefcure Foundation. So uh, those are two uh, charities that I've worked with before and go over and uh, watch those guys race, sign some autographs, and hang out. What kind of car are you going to ride? It'll be a dirt late model car. So uh, it'll be something that, you know, is out of my element, but uh, I'll learn something and it'll be fun. Now, one of your cars is actually, well, the one out there is from 2008. Right, and, right. And, yeah, we've got a AAA car from 08, and then we've got a, a UPS car from 2010. Uh, last year's one of last year's cars. And that's the one that you use on road courses. Right? That's right. Yeah, it was a road course car, so everything's moved around uh, in order to uh, to turn right and left. So a little different there. And what is actually inside a car? Because I looked inside the one there, and you got like ten switches and a, a lot of shift. a lot of fans, a lot of uh, breakers for uh, different. Uh, functions that are going on inside the race car. We obviously have to, have to monitor temperatures and uh, you know pressures for the fuel and the oil. So a lot of those uh, switches and knobs you know, or battery cutoff switches in case of a, of a fire or something. So it, it's not too complicated. Once you figure out what's going on, you can uh, operate it pretty easy. You've been in the Cup Series for four years now, well, right. since 2007. So right. what was the adjustment like to from I guess nationwide was also pretty right involved too, but to, to to be a professional and actually making real money from this, you know, it's uh, it's more like a job than than you think. Uh, you you know you are almost a sprint cup or almost in a NASCAR division, and you think it's just hey we're going to go out and race, but there's a lot of commitments, there's a lot of responsibilities, so it is like a job. Uh, the easiest part is just going out and, and racing. That's the easiest part. Indeed, and uh, well, I guess what's the fun part? Is, is it still fun, or is it? You know, a guy made a comment on. I don't know if you ever weighed in on what the guy said. What's his name? Tate. Yeah. He made, made a comment about. It. <clears throat> you know, the yeah, NASCAR is a is a great sport, and it's still fun. There's a lot of bad days. There's a few good days, but uh, it's competitive. You know, there's 42 of the best race car drivers in the world, and and we've proven that time and time again when. Uh, 
Indy wheel, uh, Indy car open wheel champions, Formula One champions have come into our sport, and it takes them a long time to adjust it if they even stick around that long. So uh, we've got a lot of great race car drivers, and it's a challenge every weekend. And how about the future? Uh, that year, uh, just just this year alone, your your win puts you in the wild card spot. Yeah. As long as nobody, I guess below you in the points. That's wins, right. Wins so we're fighting, you know, we're fighting for our life these next five or six weeks. So we've got a great shot at making the chase. Uh, that would be good for our team, for UPS. Uh, it's a contract year, so everyone's, you know, we're renegotiating our deals and it would be good to uh, win another one or uh, make the chase. And what about the chase? Do you, do you like the system, first of all, the way it's set up? Yeah, I like the point system. I think it's about perfect. I think it rewards guys that maybe aren't as consistent if you can go out and win a race, but points still matter. You have to have a good season. And then uh, the chase, you know, I think it it's only appropriate to, you know, be at your best at the end of the year. So uh, I think it, it all works out just right. I think it's exciting. You mentioned it's a contract year and whatever. You, it's, I, I imagine you'll be racing for somebody somewhere next yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, there, there's always a lot of seats and, you know, there, there's very, very few drivers that have, you know, worked at the same place 20 plus years, but I uh, really like Ford. Uh, you know, UPS has been a great partner. Uh, Roush Fenway, uh, one of the best teams on the racetrack now. So hopefully we can do all the right things to keep that puzzle together. And who are your, te your teammates in Roush? Yeah, Carl Edwards, Matt, Kenseth, and Greg Biffle. So what what is that? What kind of aspect is that to, to sports where yeah, you're racing there to win? But you know, say, you, yeah, you have to work together for a common goal. But at the end of the day, you got to take care of your number six car. You know, Carl has to take care of the number nine ninety nine car. So you know, it is uh, it's a little different than other sports uh, teammates. But uh, you know, it keeps everyone on their toes. And didn't one of your teammates help you in, in the, the four hundred? Yeah, I have Matt Kenseth and I worked really close together the whole race, so that was great to have a teammate. I couldn't have won it without him. All right, so you're looking forward to tomorrow's open house and meeting people? And yeah, the open house here should be great. You know, I don't get a lot of chances to come back home three or four times a year, so anytime I can come back home and see all my friends and family and uh, you know hang out here at the dealership and have some fun and food and uh, some nice uh, festivities going on, it's always a good time. They don't get in the ring and uh, get involved in that? Yeah, part. maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it depends on uh, how big those guys are before I, I'll make my decision whether I get in or not. Just make sure you got a chair in hand. Yeah, I'll take chair. a chair. I'll, I'll, I won't play fair. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate it, man. That will uh, work <clears throat> that part.